Next, we're going to talk about the macro knobs. Yes, the macro knobs. In my analog synthesizer usage, I have, well, for example, uh, in there was a vintage synth that I had that was a modular synth, and it had this knob called the voltage source and only had an output. And I would connect a cable from the voltage source and plug it into anything. And then basically it allowed me to control any function in the modular synthesizer. It wasn't a function in itself. It was just a source of voltage that could be increased or decreased that would cause that function to do whatever it did. And I really, really enjoyed just having a source of voltage to throw around anywhere that I wanted. So many functions have their own voltage controls built into them so that you control them. Like look at these uh, oscillators, you, you, they have all of the controls you would need. And then of course you think of how they should be modulated and you think, well, the LFO, and then you set those controls and the LFO controls the voltage and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, I liked the idea that there was a knob that I could like put in charge of doing a specific voltage related task. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you a very long story. Basically, what uh, Archuria has done is they've given you four of that concept. Right here in your left-hand performance space, you have access to these four knobs and you can direct them to control anything. Now, when I'm playing, I love like reaching up and messing with a particular function. Uh, but even like with the master cutoff, which is super fun and super easy to control. <laughs> But it's, it's up here, and it's very specifically designed to control one thing. Uh, well, two things, actually, the filter cutoffs. What if I wanted something that did what the master cutoff control did and also did some other things, uh, like brought in metalizer or whatever? And that's basically what you have in the macro knobs. They are all-purpose knobs that you can direct to do anything you want. So the four knobs are here and where they, uh, what they correspond with is here on the mod matrix, these bottom four uh, rows are represent the macro knobs and you can direct them to control anything. Um, like for example, let's take M1, macro knob one, have it control the frequency of oscillator one, uh, the cutoff, of the Steiner filter, um, the, uh, well, let's see, the, the metal amount of oscillator one. Um, yeah, and then every time you turn that knob, Uh, basically, it is controlling Let's put it up here. Every time you turn that knob, you have a range of 200. It goes, well, basically, it goes up to 99 or down to 99. So you can use it just as a way to create wacky noises. Or you can make decisions like, I like this at setting 14, so you can get it right to where you want it to be. That's what you chose? What were you thinking? No, I'm just joking. Uh, but basically, so you can use it as a means to set different functions in tandem to specific outcomes. And you can do that times four, and there's no limit. There's just you know the limit of what... Uh, destinations exist here and how you deal with those desti destinations with the assignable aspect. So you can use this knob to control a whole bunch of different functions at once and then set how much it controls those functions using the, the matrix, like choosing a particular destination, then setting it. And then by controlling all of them at once, you can find really interesting 
points along the gradient of the, that control. I, I sound like I'm just saying a bunch of weird words. I mean, it's hard to explain. Basically, you can get anything to be set in a certain range of behavior. And then as you turn this one knob, it takes all of those things through their individual ranges of their individual behaviors. It's very, very unique and interesting. <laughs> Let's have it control oscillator two just a little bit. And don't forget, you can use the assignable thing. So like we could have it so it controlled the volume of VCO3. Now VCO3 won't exist unless we bring it in with this. So uh, there's, oh, I guess that's not true. So you can control a whole bunch of functions at once with one of these knobs and you have four. If you have an opportunity, well, let's just do it. Let's do a little test here. Let's go over into the presets and kind of see what has happened, where they've directed these. Okay. Oh, I was like, <laughs> something's going terribly wrong there, but we have the aftertouch going on there. So we just have this nice base that is G6. Let's hear what they did. Okay, uh, we can look on the mod matrix. Uh, macro knob one is controlling two things. Uh, 14, which is VCO square level, and 16, which is Steiner envelope amount. And the good thing is you can always get back to zero. That's the cool thing. You just have to watch the screen up here and you can see where you're at and how to get back to there not being any effect, which is not so simple uh, in your various settings up here because once you have something set to a certain place, you have to memorize where that place is and you don't have any feedback other than your memorizing of what tick it was on. Whereas when you use the macro knobs, you get an indication of where zero is, which is so helpful. Let's see what they had for two. Two, they had VCO2 square level and Steiner envelope amount. Three, they had both cutoffs. And four, they had, looks like just a VCA. So you can turn the VCA up and down. You can control the volume with these knobs. Uh, let's find another patch and see what they did. Okay, just at random, K10. Let's see what they have going on. M1 is controlling VCO2's pitch, Steiner cutoff, uh, and LFO rate, LFO one and two rate. Uh, two, we had uh, LFO2 rate and Steiner out level. Three, it looks like we have ladder cutoff and uh, effects dry wet. So you get these really interesting combinations. Uh, four has all four of the assignable columns set. LFO one rate, LFO two rate, Steiner out level and dry wet effects. So yeah, I mean, it's hard to adequately explain the intensity of this control. It's really a fabulous way to uh, 
create real time changes in sounds also as a tool to find places where the intersection of different functionalities sound great. <laughs> And then by turning them individually, you can find where all four of these different outcomes align to make whole new sounds in the midst of your sound without even messing with the knobs. And also during sequences, this is this is where you can really get beautiful outcomes. You can design outcomes in advance and create sweeping changes over time. Anyway, it is fantastic functionality. It's one of my favorite parts of this because it allows you to create new sounds through the interaction of multiple sounds as controlled by the matrix. <laughs>